at the beginning of my study period. I was trying to study for five hours of the MCAT on top of a full-time job and I lasted for about a week and a half of that and then after that I was just to a point where I had no energy to study. It ended up being a couple weeks of me not studying at all for the MCAT which could have completely been avoided if I was realistic with myself. Hello my name is Sarah Peel and I am an MCAT tutor here at Medlife Mastery and I am really excited that I will be teaching the MCAT live course here at Medlife Mastery from March 11th to April 17th of 2025. In today's video I will just be talking a little bit about my MCAT prep journey so that hopefully you can take some of the things that I have learned and the mistakes that I made so that you can get closer towards your goal MCAT score. I studied for the MCAT during the summer of my second year so I had about four months that I was dedicating to studying but at the same time I was also in doing full-time research on the side so it was definitely a challenge balancing both the MCAT and research and I did end up having to push my exam date back from when I had originally scheduled it so I think that that brings up an important point about balancing multiple things with MCAT MCAT studying. I don't think it's realistic for a lot of people to study for the MCAT for a couple months straight. If you can do that, that's amazing and that's great. But if you're not able to, I just want to tell you that you can always increase the length of the MCAT studying period and study for a couple more months. But if you try to jam too much MCAT prep into a really short amount of time with your other commitments, that's a recipe for burning out. If you need to push it back and that's the best decision for you, please don't view that as a failure of yourself just know that there are many people out there who have experienced the same thing and they've been successful in the end so just don't worry too much so something else that I really struggled with is that I went into the MCAT without taking physics and without taking biochemistry so it can be really intimidating going into the MCAT where you know you're going to be tested about these topics without having a really good background on it but I am here to tell you that it will just take a little bit more effort up front but it's definitely doable spend a little bit of time at the beginning of your MCAT prep to essentially do a crash course on any of the topics that you are unfamiliar with or that you kind of are forgetting, trying to get a good background information for all of these topics. Looking back now on things that I wish somebody would have told me when I first started is that you will be bombarded with just so many different resources that it's really difficult to know which ones are best. When I initially started out, I was just of the mindset that I had to use almost every single resource that I found in order to be successful but really that couldn't be further from the truth. Find just a few good resources and focus on doing them completely. Some content review sources so that can be either videos or you can read some books. In terms of practice problems I think that UWorld is a really good resource so using UWorld for your practice problems would be great. It has so many questions I think that it's worth the price because it's also usually a little bit more difficult than what would show up on the MCAT so then going to the AAMC material feels a little bit easier. Also, if you are in a time crunch or you're just wondering what would be the most important resource to use, anything that you buy from the AAMC website is going to be really important, especially the section banks because those are released most recently. So they're going to be more representative of how the test is now, as well as the full length exams. If you can't do anything else, taking the full length exams that the AAMC has released now is going to be extremely important. If I had to go back and do it again, how I would arrange my studying would be just focusing on one content review resource, one source for practice problems other than the AAMC, and then moving into the AAMC practice problem. I took the MCAT back in August of 2022 and I scored a 526 on this exam. So I scored a 132 on the bio biochemistry section, the chemistry physics section, and the psychology sociology section. And then I scored a 130 on the car section and I will go through just some main tips that I have for MCAT studying that I think everybody should implement if possible. So the first tip is that reviewing your practice problem is probably the most important part of studying for the MCAT. If you get a question wrong, then reattempt the question without looking at the answer or the solution at all. If you're getting it correct on the second go around, then that means that you probably are able to answer the question. There is just something that was getting in the way the first time. If after your second 
attempt for reviewing that question, you get it incorrect again, then what I would recommend is you show the correct answer and then try to work your way backwards from the correct answer to see how they would have gotten the answer. Because then as you're doing this, you're training your brain into thinking how the MCAT test makers would want you to do, which again is so much more beneficial to then just reading the solution they provide you. Another tip I have is to start cars practice really early on and be consistent with cars. It takes a lot of time to develop a strategy that works best for you. I would also recommend using AAMC material early and focusing on the AAMC cars material because a lot of third parties, their cars are a little bit different in terms of their thinking style and pattern than the AAMC resources are. And then another tip I would have is the Kaplan Quick Sheets are a great resource to go over just before your exam to make sure that you have all the high yield content down and so that you can memorize any kind of last minute facts that may come up on the MCAT. And also the amino acid quiz app is just an app that you can get from the app store. I would recommend maybe 10 minutes a day. And if you spend that time going over the amino acids, then that will help you significantly because the amino acids are tested so commonly. And I am really excited that I will be teaching the MCAT live course here at MedLife Mastery from March 11th to April 17th of 2025. I wish you the best of luck during your studying. Thank you.